my brother and Mr. Michael here. Oui, madame. Well, pack your things. I'm taking you with me. Madame. Dominic, see that Jeanne and my mother are ready, and then fetch the box. Subito, signora. Any word from Prince Paul? A note from the Austin Embassy, madame. He is on his way. Thank you. Lily, my dear. How dare you? How dare you? I beg your pardon. When I asked you to represent me at Ned's funeral, I expected you to be discreet. And so I was. Though it was damn difficult surrounded by reporters and gossip writers. You issued a statement. Well, I had to do something, as if your husband dying on the same day your horse won the Cesarevich wasn't enough. And that wreath? Who sent that wreath? Who chose it? I did, I admit. But and I... had it tied with fawn and turquoise ribbons, my racing colours? The colour of the florist said she thought they were pretty. It was sent directly to the cemetery. None of us saw it till it was on the coffin. It seems to have been an ironic coincidence, Lily, that's all. That's all. Meanwhile, every newspaper in Europe says that I'm a heartless adventuress with the most macabre sense of humour since Messalina. That's why I had to put out a statement. They kept asking why he was penniless. They had to be told you've hardly seen him in the last 16 years and that you've been supporting him all that time. Despite their guns. And well, now they're sharpening their knives. I can hardly move for them. Then why come to London? I've just come to collect Mother and Jeanne. I'm taking them back with me to all this blows over. I'm really sorry, Mrs. Langtry. Well, never mind. It doesn't seem to have been anyone's fault, Teddy. Let's not fuss. It's been a distressing week. Yes, it was pretty awful. Ned dying like that. Yes. And I had to miss the rest of the meeting, and I had a horse running every day. I'm glad the press didn't hear that. I can't be hypocritical and pretend to be sorry. So, no more statements. Hello, Duchess. Mother? It's Clement. <laughs> oh, my dear, how nice to see you. How's Alice? Very well, Mother. Sends her love. You must bring her round here more often. Yes, I will. Morning, Mother. Oh, Lily, Jeanne won't be coming down just yet. Oh, why is that? Well, she's taking this all rather badly. Uh, Mother, you remember my manager, Mr. Michael? Oh, yes. How do you do? Good morning, Mrs. Lebrun. You must bring Alice round here more often. Uh, yes, Mother, yes, I, I will. Uh, no, I won't take those, thank you very much. Did you travel up from Newmarket with all that jewellery? Yes, I'd taken them to Regal Lodge with me, and now it's time for a change. The sapphires, do you know? Yes, the sapphires and the pearls. Didn't please. you have a guard with you? No, it only have drawn attention. Did you send the cheque to Oscar? I'd like to talk to you about that, Mrs Langtry. The point is, there's still a great deal of prejudice against he's Mr He's a friend Warren. and he's starving. Yes, but if it gets out that you're helping him, I Mrs really Langtry... see no reason why it should. Edward... Send yes, the money to the Hotel Sandwich in Dieppe to a Mr. Sebastian Melman. And the ring the Crown Prince gave me. Ah, oh, povero raga. And then will you take the box upstairs? <laughs> You're not going to leave that box here, I hope. Why not? What do you mean, why not? You can't leave it in an empty house. Oh, very well, Teddy can take it to the bank. So which one? The Union, down Sloan Square. And get a receipt. I always had charge of this box when we were on tour. Oh, yes. Just walking down a street with it takes years off my life expectancy. His Highness, Prince Paul Esterazzi. Oh! Meine liebe Dame. Mes hommages, mad madame. Gentlemen. Sir, if you'll excuse me. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry again. Mr. It's all forgotten, Daddy. Clem. I was overjoyed to hear that you had returned. Ah, oh, but I'm not staying. Oh, disappointed. I have to stay at Newmarket longer than I'd expected. Well, perhaps I could visit you. Well, I'm having some friends down for the weekend. Why don't you join Friends? Me? Oh, it's my birthday. Oh, in that case, if you do not invite me, I shall shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> the best of the lot, Caesar. I had that done if I... I'm sorry, my dear. Oh, forgive me, Your Royal Highness. Uh, no, for I a moment. You were here. I left my book uh, here. No matter. No matter. It is Jean Marie, isn't it? Yes, sir. You've grown up a lot since I last saw you. 
For a moment, you reminded me very much of your mother. Well, thank you, sir. Please. Oh, yes. Yes, I can still see it. You bet you're in mourning. For my father, sir. Your father? Oh, yes, yes, tragic. Of course, I did not know him very well. No. No. Charming man. Sportsman. We went sailing together once or twice. Ah, oh, there you are, Jean. She's become such a young lady, I hardly recognized her, and so pretty. Yes, I'm very proud of her. So you should be. You're starting to look like sisters. Oh. I say, Lily, when are you going to... Oh, sorry to butt in. Oh, I say. Your Royal Highness, may I present Hugo de Bar? Oh, I know, Shuggy. You're in, um, let me see, the Gloucesters, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Lieutenant. For my sins. <laughs> what is it, Shuggy? Well, Patsy sent me, actually. Old Esther... What's his name? Is sounding off because you're not in view. Mr. Harzi. Well, tell Patsy I'll be out in a moment. Oh, right -o. And take Jeanne with you. It's time you join the party. With your permission. Mm, oh, yes, yes, of course. You two run along. Thank you, sir. Shuggy. <laughs> Nearly made him an equerry once. Are he and Jeanne? Oh, um... no, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Could do worse. Very old title. Father can't last much longer. Shuggy would be kind to her, at least. She, um, still thinks Langtree was her father. Yes. Does she know anything about Louis? No. Are you going to tell her? Oh, later, perhaps. It's been difficult for her, thinking that she was my niece and then finding out she was my daughter. Mm. Did Louis see her? Occasionally. At parties in passing. 99% of them think I'm her father anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, not at all, not at all. I'm flattered. <laughs> mm. Well, shall we join your guests? Yes. Go along, Caesar. I'll see that she's presented at court. Oh, Bertie, would that be possible? Yes, of course. Patsy says she'll sponsor. No, Patsy... Gladys de Grey, Lottie, we'll find someone. Many people staying here? Eight or so, I'm afraid. Hmm. Well, I dare say I could get Natty Rothschild to put me up in his racing box for a few days. You might care to pop over for a chat. I might. Charming. Charming. I'm sure we are going to be great friends. How lovely to see you, Lily. You must bring Jeanne to tea. I would be honored, Ma. We must arrange it, May. Yes, Ma. I don't believe you remember my son, George. I'm afraid not, Your Royal Highness. How unkind, Miss Langtree. After all, I did lift you down the steps of your house and into your carriage. But though it was your first visit to London, and you were only four or five. <laughs> Louis, I don't expect you to remember my nephew either, Prince Louis of Battenberg. May I present Miss Langtree? Good afternoon, Miss Langtree. Good afternoon, Your Royal Highness. Oh, I'm not a royal. I'm a serene. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Langtree. Your Serene Highness. I hope we may have the pleasure of seeing you in the theatre again soon. I have virtually retired from the stage, sir. That is a pity. It was wonderful, Aunt Alice. I was terrified when I was presented to the Queen, but, but the Prince and Princess of Wales were so different. They, they were so friendly. So I've been told. Did you, um, did you meet any other royalties? I met Prince George and Princess May. Uh, there were lots more. I can't remember them all. <laughs> you were a very great success, my darling. Everybody wanted to meet you. Well, it looks as though I shall have to write a play for you, Jeanne. Over my 
my dead body, Sydney. I have no intention of letting Jeanne go to the theatre. I'll have to write it for you, then. Oh, Lily has no need to act anymore, Mr. Well, Grant. I'm very grateful for what the theatre's given me, but I don't miss it. Oh, that's enough about me. It's Jeanne's day. Here, here. Well, not every afternoon you go to your first garden party at Marlborough House, eh? Exactly, Sugar. <clears throat> I say, how about me taking Jeanne and you out to dinner tonight? Uh, to celebrate. Café Royal, Ketner's, you choose. Oh, could we, Mother? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeanne. I'm going to the Opera of Prince Paul tonight. Oh, lucky old Esther. Well, never mind, Sugar. You can take us out to dinner next week. Oh, no go, I'm afraid. My allowance came today. Next week will be too late. <laughs> On that tragic note, I must say thank you and au revoir, Mrs. Langtry. Going to the West End? Yes. Share a cab? I have my carriage. Even better. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Le Breton. Mr. Le Breton? <clears throat> Pardon, madame. May we see you a moment? It's all right, Mrs. Langley. Oh, I'll see you out. Ah, our child. <laughs> oh, sorry to run. Now, what is it? Have you been to the bank? Si, signora. And you collected my box, the jewel box? No. The clerk said you already had it, He madame. said it was handed over to you at the end of last month. But that's ridiculous. Who authorised it? I, I was in Baden Well, see, that's what I now, told him. Now, hold on. The banker, he said, a tall, ruddy-faced man came in with a note of authorization, with your signature on it, well, signora. the bank just handed it over. That's it, monsieur. He's gone. How did this man get hold of your signature? Quite simply, the signature on the order was a direct copy. I have every intention of suing the bank for a great deal of money. Half your assets were tied up in that jewellery. A hundred thousand pounds. Yes, I know. The bank's legal adviser thinks they'd be prepared to settle out of court, but I'm afraid the most they'd agree to pay is ten thousand. That's iniquitous. I'll fight it. There's no point, Lily. The bank's whole case is they had no list or valuation of the contents of the box. All it needs is for your stables to have two bad seasons. I realise that, Terry. You were planning to double your stock. You can't go ahead now. I'll sell my yacht. The white lady? Well, it'll take time to find a buyer. I'll put her up for auction. Why, it's just not done, Lily. No one's ever auctioned a yacht. Then I'll be the first. We can auction the fixtures and the contents separately, and that'll create interest. Arrange it, Teddy. But I really Arrange don't... it, please. Very well. Meantime, I'll take up Sidney Grundy's offer. And go back into the theatre. Well, it's not a bad play. Good title, The Degenerates. Very commercial. You look doubtful, Teddy. Well, that's only that part of your drawing power was that the women in the audience always wonder which pieces of your jewellery you'd be wearing. And like to guess where they'd come from. Yes, I'd already thought of that. Clem, if that is the bank's last offer, then tell them we'll accept it, but only on condition that the theft is kept secret. Possible? I imagine they'd be only too happy. Good. My jewellers in Paris know most of my pieces. They can reproduce them in paste, and the audience will never know. Oh. <laughs> so, Teddy, arrange the auction first, then get on to Sydney Grundy. Rehearsal start mid-August. That is dreadful, my dear lady. But you were insured, of course. Unfortunately, no. Uh, and you can sit there so calmly? Well, the police are looking into it. There's nothing else I can do. Unglaubliche Frau. You are wonderful, my dearest Lily. <laughs> Besides, I wouldn't want to spoil a charming evening. I am flattered, as any man would be who has the privilege of being alone with you. You have become very precious to me, Lily. No, I am not a boy anymore. I think very carefully. You know I have estates in Austria, my family is honored, and... And this is not the time nor the place. But now that you are free, I would wish to speak to you soon about something very important. Do you understand? I think so. Oh, <laughs> if I could take you to Austria, I would carry you to my schloss in the mountains, surround you with Zigonia violins, and, and bathe you in champagne. <laughs> Instead, all I can do is to replace some of your jewelry. Oh, I forbid it. Uh, you cannot forbid a prince, you know. <laughs> what is your birthstone? Oh, Paul. We shall see. Paul. <laughs> Say nothing. Uh, we, shall, uh, we shall change this subject. Now, do you know, your Prince Bertie is one of the most extraordinary men. Come in. 
She's awake, yeah. John. Good morning, oh, Mama. Good morning, my darling. Oh, what's this, a breakfast party? It is John's idea, in case you were still upset about losing all your jewels. Oh, how kind of you. Thank you, Dominic. Are you going riding with Prince Paul this morning? No, I don't think so. Jean's beginning to wonder what it will be like to have a mum as a princess. Oh, Dominique. Well, you can stop wondering, my darling, because I have decided not to become a princess. Marvel. Then may I come riding with you? I can't think of anything I'd like better. You go to Bath said that if we did go out together, he might join us. Well, the way I'm feeling this morning, he'll have to ride very fast to catch us. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Shuggy! What are you doing here? Well, I'd never visited the Channel Islands before, and I thought, what a splendid opportunity. Are you on leave? Blighters wouldn't give me any. So now I'm a free man. I uh, chucked up my commission. <laughs> Not just to come here. <laughs> I was fed up playing toy soldiers anyway. Jeanne's down by the beach. I was just going to call her. Oh, it's uh, not her I've come to see, actually. It's you. I don't think you really meant that, should you? No, but I did, my dear, Mrs. Langtree. Never been more serious in my life. Well, now that you're here, the least I can do is to offer you some tea. The least? Can we settle down? <laughs> settle down, please! Do you mind? Thank you. Mr. Hawtrey. Now remember, Lord Stornoway is a little drunk. Now you come on looking for the whiskey, which is uh, uh, down left. And at first I don't see him. Exactly. I doubt that the audience will believe that, Mr. Grundy. Look, should I be behind a screen or something? Doing what? Undressing. On stage? Only the outer layer. Might be quite a draw, don't you think? <laughs> well, um, shall we try it? Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Hawtrey? Oh, come on, come on! Quite so drunk, I think, Mr. Hawtrey. Uh, sorry, I got a little carried away. No smoking on stage, please. Give Mr. DeBarth a light, will you please, Teddy? Oh, can we get on, please? This rate will never be ready for the opening, Mrs. DeBarth. Bring the champagne from the dressing room, will you, Teddy, please? Gather round, everyone. Mr. DeBath and I have a little announcement to make. I've just read the papers. Mm. We're in all of them. Front page. <laughs> yes. It's a pity about my father, though. Just because you're an actress. He'd soon change his mind if only he'd agree to meet you. I think I'll write to the papers and tell them that. Oh, that's the last thing you should do. Can't make it worse. You know he's cut off my allowance. Well, it doesn't matter. We don't need it. Well, you certainly don't. When you auctioned your yacht, everyone thought he was mad. But look what he brought in. A quarter of a million. A quarter of a million. That's a fortune. Well, you should keep us for a while. Hmm. This business with the Boers is getting worse, you know. It's just my luck to leave the army when a war's about to start. You're far better out of it, Shuggy. Yes, but I wish I contributed something. Oh, you do, my darling. I'm sorry, Mother. Uh, sorry. If you call me Papa, I'll spank you. I'm sorry, Shuggy. <laughs> I just wanted to say that Dominic and I thought we'd take Grandma out for a walk. Ah, uh, how is she? Oh, she smiled when we said we'd take her out. Sure. Look, if you're going to rehearsal, why don't I help wheel Grandmama around? Oh, would you like to? Keep me out of mischief. All right. Jeanne, wait for Shuggy. 
I'll pick you up. What time's rehearsal finish? About five. Ah. Well, I'll find something to do till then. I may pop in, watch a bit. I'd like that. <clears throat> ah, hello, Clem. Morning. 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 You're always welcome. Isn't he, Lily? Mm. Yes, of course. Thank you, Shuggy. Right. Is it true about his father disinheriting him? Sir Henry's exact words are, I wish I could die now so the will could come into effect at once. Well, at least he can't stop him inheriting a title. No. Papers have been a lot kinder than I expected. Oh, Claire. Well, hang it all, Lily. He is nearly 20 years younger than you. Don't tell me you weren't distressed by what they said. Only if it affects the box office. My dear Lily, <laughs> and how lovely to have you back. Thank you, Gladys. You must come and dine with us occasionally, Jeanne, when your mama is at the theatre. I'd love to, Lady de Grey. You must find her an escort. Oh, Shuggy can bring her. Ah, uh, what did you think of the play, Lady de Grey? It was wicked, really shocking. The critics will loathe it, and the public will flock in as usual. <laughs> <laughs> but my dear, painting your fingernails. Well, I thought it was right for the character. Oh, how dare you. And the tiara you wore in the last act, wherever did you get it? My jewellers in Paris made it for me. Sumptuous. <laughs> well done, Audrey. Most amusing. Thank you. Do you think it'll run? <laughs> the lily would make anything run. They tell me this play is based on her own life. Oh, very loosely. Except at the end, she marries a rich and highly intelligent duke. <laughs> you heard of Oscar Wilde say. What? Isn't it a pity that the most famous and beautiful actress in the world, after a tragic domestic life, has married a fool? <laughs> How nice of you to come, George. I try never to miss your first night, Lily. Mr. Alexander thinks our play will run. Just the thing the public needs to take its mind off this war in South Africa. I can't imagine how you picked them. Well, you had a very impressive list of successes yourself. Lady Windermere's fan, the importance of being earnest. Yes. Beerbohm Tree tells me he met Oscar in Paris. I believe he's in a very bad way. So one hears. I believe you met him too. All right. I admit it. I behave very badly. I should have spoken to him. Instead of passing him as if he didn't exist? I've been trying to think of some way to make it up to him ever since. One can't just send him money. You could put on one of his plays. You owe the rights. The public wouldn't stand for it, though. Not yet. You know that. They still haven't forgiven him for you. Not being here. <laughs> now he's dying. <laughs> Georgie Reed. In the chorus of the gaiety. My husband has an incurable fascination for members of my profession. Excuse me. Many congratulations on your performance, Mrs. Langton. Uh, I beg your pardon, Mrs. De Bath. Thank you, sir. You look wonderful. And I adore Jeanne. <laughs> I'm glad you've met her now. I don't believe I've met your husband. Can I present him, sir? <laughs> and I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. Yes, madam. Good. Shogi, Prince Louis of Battenberg would like to meet you. Oh, really? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's being at a loose end every evening while she's working. You don't regret your marriage? No, of course not. She's very good to me. Though it is a bit like being married to a national institution. <laughs> I'd never realised before. All the women copy her. Hats, shoes, whatever she wears. <laughs> They've all started painting their fingernails just because she does. That's Georgie. Yes. Yes. Does Lily know? She hasn't given up her friend. She doesn't expect you to. Ah, oh, Lily. Uh, I think I'd better... If you'll excuse me. Well, 
Have you talked him out of it? It's too late, Lily. He's already volunteered to fight in South Africa. There's nothing to be done. But why does he insist on going? He's trained as a soldier. And there are other reasons he might be too embarrassed to tell you. Oh, such as? Well, you feed him, clothe him, keep him. He feels like a lapdog. He's prepared to risk his life to get away from me. Not exactly. His old battalion has sailed for the Cape. He feels ashamed not to be with them. Clem, he could be killed. He knows that. I want him to come to Paris with me at the end of the run in the New York. I must stop him. If you do, you'll lose him. This is the first positive thing he's done in his whole life. It's ridiculous. Yes. Still, there is one good thing. Old Sir Henry Hugo's father is impressed by his volunteering and has forgiven him. He says he'll receive you. Oh, how gracious. your reception will always make me remember Chicago as a haven of refuge. I, I confess that I have felt rather wounded by the attacks on the play and myself, but nothing so much as today I heard of the death of a dear Dear friend of mine, a great poet and playwright. And tonight, before coming on, I received a cable saying that my husband is dangerously ill in a military hospital in South Africa. I'm sorry. The ovation when she broke down went on for 10, 20 minutes. Not a dry eye in the theatre. Business had been good up to Chicago. After then, she was breaking her own box off in records. Was de Bath really ill? Oh, very. Enteric fever. Had it for six months. Never got within 100 miles of any fighting. <laughs> I've only seen him with Lily once or twice since he got back. That's about all she's seen of him. <laughs> the title of the play, The Degenerates, gave the newspapers the chance to attack us. Of course, they were nearly all pro-Boer, and they even had us banned in some cities. Oh, how great. It started in New York. So I thought the best method of defence was attack, and I announced that I was going to have a buffet concert at Sherry's in aid of British and Boer War wounded. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Every actor and actress on Broadway agreed to help. And we made over $5,000 for hospital supplies. Oh, that's one Amazing! Oh, that's <laughs> and did the papers change their tune? Oh, they said it was the most demoralizing spectacle ever to disgrace New York. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Lady de Grey. Good evening, Ian. Do you know Ian Malcolm? Yes, yes, I believe we've met. Mrs. DeBarth. Good evening, Sharon. Good evening, Ian. He's a friend of yours. I met him at Lady de Grey's. Young yeah, Winston. Jenny Churchill's son says he's the coming man in politics. <laughs> they formed themselves into a club called the Malcontents. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a member of Parliament? He swept in at the election after the Queen died. <coughs> it's still strange to think of Bertie being king. Making a damn fine one. Of course, he's still in one. Were you expecting Shelby and Helen? Yes, what is your husband doing with himself these days? He's become a lepidopterist. I beg your pardon. He collects butterflies. Evening, everyone. <coughs> Hello, Lily. Well, what a surprise. Just decided to pop in. Uh, you remember Miss Reed, don't you? Yes. 
Yes, of course. Is your play going well? Very well, thank you, Mrs. Lang. Mrs. De Bath? Good. Don't be too late home, will you, surely? Oh, no. Uh, no, shan't be. <clears throat> uh, come along, Georgie. And when this run ends, I do hope that you'll all stay with me. But of course we will. What will we be doing next, Mrs. Langtree? Not what, Charles, but where? I am hoping to open my own theatre. When? <laughs> well, it has to be rebuilt first. Well, where is it? It's the old theatre Royal Aquarium site in Westminster. But that's oh enormous! It's a two-and-a-half-thousand-seater! <laughs> with any luck, we'll need them all! <laughs> <laughs> hate to think what it'll cost. <laughs> that's my concern, Charles. Yours will be to help me fill it. The Lady du Grey, madame. Gladys! How nice to see you. I simply had to pop in when I heard you'd put off your dinner party. I thought you might be ill. No, no, I just can't risk any male guests coming here. Well, why ever not? I met this ridiculous Marquis in Paris. Gladys, I gave him hardly any encouragement, but now he's followed me back to London. He's taken the house opposite and sits in the window with a loaded revolver, threatening to shoot any man who comes to the door. Why well, can't the police do something? <laughs> no, apparently not. Not till he's fired the first shot. So they're stopping all male pedestrians. Well, I may as well stay here now. Oh, yes, do. I'd love that. What a good thing I didn't bring my husband. <laughs> what about Hugo? He's in the south of France. He seems to be away a lot. I think husbands should be free to spend as much time with other women as they want, if the wife consents. Besides, it makes them far more attentive when they come home. Where's Jean? She's at a party at the Westminster's. She seems to be seeing rather a lot of Ian Malcolm lately. Yes, it's perfectly safe. He's just as straight-laced as she is. Has she said anything? Oh, only that she likes him. Yes. It would be a very good match. Do you know the Malcolms? I met them once. A bit stiff. Oh, very. It's an old Scottish family, very strict and correct. Yes? Pardon me, madame. What is it, Louis? I'm uh, not at liberty to say, madame. What on earth? What on earth are you doing? Uh, what's up there? Well, nothing, a rear alley and railings. What's going on? Louis, are you going to tell me what's going on, or am I going to... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah. Thank you. Come along, Francis. Your Majesty. That's better. Let's have a little more respect around <laughs> here. Mm, good evening, Gladys. Oh, hello, Sir Francis. Oh, we ran into a police patrol. <laughs> so we thought you might like some company. We caught your butler's attention through the pantry window. Oh, why didn't you use a telephone? Why didn't we use a telephone? Because we never thought of it. <laughs> Come and sit down, please, Gladys. <laughs> ah. Ah. Well, this is just like the old days, eh? I hear you've been working far too hard. Oh, well, there's a lot to do. My mama left a great deal unfinished. <laughs> Besides, it's all so interesting. Ah, good man, you remembered. Champagne. And what have you been doing? Oh, the usual theatre, racing. Hmm. Your stables are phenomenally successful. You're top of the winning owners again. Yes, I'm sorry I beat you. No, you're not. <laughs> is that what I think it is? A tape machine. Gives me the odds at any track at any time. Hmm. I must get one of those. Francis, I must get one of those. Uh, yes, sir. Still married? Still supporting a husband. You could have been a princess, you know. Never understand why you didn't marry Esther Harsey. Was it because he painted his hair? Oh, no, not just that. He wore corsets. <laughs> <laughs> When's your new theatre going to open? Oh, soon, I hope. What are you going to call it? <laughs> well, now we have a king emperor, there's only one name possible. The Imperial. It 
It'll never be ready to open up this year. It must. It's costing too much to Mr. Host season. Mrs. Langtree. Uh, Mrs. Tabar. Mrs. Langtree will do. It needs a whole new central girder. Well, the builder said he could do it in time. I expect him to do it. I'm so glad you're here, Uncle Clem. Hmm. And you want Alice. I can't think why you're so nervous. Has your mother ever been able to deny you anything? Hmm? <laughs> I'm surprised to see you here at Newmarket, Mr. Malcolm. I didn't think you were interested in racing. Not really. Not as uh, such. Perhaps you want to buy a filly? <laughs> I believe you are teasing me, Mrs. de Bath. <laughs> I believe you already know that I wish to marry Jeanne. I am in a position to support her. More than adequately. My prospects. Yes, I already know quite a lot about you, Mr. Malcolm. Really, isn't it time I started calling you Ian? <laughs> there is one very important thing, though, that you haven't mentioned. Oh, I, I love Jeanne very deeply and will cherish her all my life. Then there's only one question to be asked. Jeanne, this foolish young man seems to want to marry you. Do you love him? Oh, yes, yes, very much. And I'm sure you'll be very happy. Oh, Mother. Mother, thank you. Oh, lovely, lovely. Congratulations, my boy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I don't know how you got them to do it. What do you mean, I can't come it's to the wedding? It's not my decision, it's the Malcolms. What have they got against me? Well, it's nothing personal. You know what they like about appearances, and, well, you are three years younger than Ian. Oh, damn it, Lily, I'm your husband. That's the problem, my darling. They probably wouldn't have you if you weren't Jeanne's mother. No, probably not. They've already made it very clear that while they accept Jeanne in the family, I am not so welcome. And you just accept it? Why? For Jeanne's sake. I'd do anything to make her happy. Well, they've left it damn late to issue their ultimatums. Two days before the wedding. I'm not going to stay around town and have people pointing. No, no, I I I'm going back to Monte Carlo. And you can add that to the wedding expenses. Oh, you're home early. May I talk to you? Yes, of course. Did you enjoy the party? Who was there? Oh, lots of people. Mainly politicians and their wives. Well, you have to get used to that. Mrs. Asquith came up to me and started asking me what presents I'd had. Oh, no, Margaret, she wanted an inventory. She asked me what my father had given me. I told her she'd made a mistake that my father was dead. She said, don't be silly. Everybody knows your father's Louis Battenberg. I couldn't think what she meant. What did you say? I just told her she was wrong, but she laughed and said everybody knew. Well, you shouldn't have listened. Is that why Ian's parents have been so difficult, why they've been so awful to you? They may have heard the same rumour. Is it true? I have to know. I couldn't marry Ian if it was true. No, of course it isn't. Is that really why you pretended not to be my mother, why I had to live with my grandmother? Oh, Sharon. <laughs> Jeanne, don't. Please, please don't, Jeanne. She was so certain. How many times have I told you never to listen to scandal? Hmm? I swear it's not true. Do you swear it? Very well, if I must. I swear. Oh. Jan, that's not kind. Oh, Mother. Mother, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but why do people say such things, such terrible things? I don't know. I'll talk to Mrs. Asquith. I'll tell her. No. No, it's better not to say anything. Why? Why not? Well, people never understand. I was a woman of my own. I, I, I had to do what was best for both of us. 
And the more successful I became, the more rumors there were about you, about Prince Louis and others. I just had to pay no attention. You could forgive them. It was the only way. No. Now, come along. I want you to think about the day after tomorrow and your wedding and the reception I'm giving for you and Ian. Yes. <laughs> I've spoken to Uncle Clem. I've arranged an allowance, £5,000 a year. Oh, Mother, you must It's indeed. just in case anything happens. I don't want you to have to struggle like I did. You're so good. You're so kind. Ian? <laughs> you said you wouldn't interrupt me again. I'm trying to work. I know, darling. I know, but... <laughs> what? I feel so happy. <laughs> I've been thinking. About what? About my mother and my father. I worried about it so much, it was the one thing that nearly stopped me marrying you. I couldn't hold that against you. Well, it was because he died in an asylum, but Mother explained. He was only in there for observation because he drank too much. It wasn't as if there was something really wrong with him. Edward Langtree, but he wasn't your father. I was beginning to wonder when I was going to see you. Ian, explain to me about my father. I know the truth at last. How you abandoned your husband for another man and had a child, me, by a man who wouldn't marry you. We couldn't marry. I couldn't get a divorce. And I now know how you've lied to me all my life. Always different lies and I believe them. Even before my wedding, when I begged you to tell me the truth, you lied to me even then. I've never had any other choice, Jeanne. You gave me no other choice. Not to be able to live your kind of life. Jeanne. How could I have been so blind for so long? Darling, please. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. I can't think what your husband has told you. Nor what right you have to condemn me. Whatever I have done, it was for your sake as much as mine. I don't believe you. You've never done anything that wasn't completely calculated, heartless and completely selfish. Jeanne. You're oh, my daughter. If only I could believe that that was a lie, too. I was surprised when Jeanne didn't even come to Mother's funeral. You just don't see her. I had a letter from her husband saying that I would be allowed to see her twice a year, provided each visit lasted no longer than half an hour. I didn't reply. They turned her completely against me, Clem. Sorry, it took longer than I thought. That's all right, Teddy. The Wesleyan Church has bought the old aquarium site, which of course includes the Imperial Theatre. That means you're now their tenant. They want to raise the rent? Worse than that. They're totally opposed to the theatre. At the end of your lease this year, they're going to tear it down. What? They can't do that. Copy the contract. I only took the shorter lease because I was negotiating to buy it. That's what I told their lawyer. He said he could not be bound by negotiations with the previous owner. He wouldn't even discuss it. I'm sorry, Lily. Legally, they are within their rights. Of course, they admit they have some obligations since you made so many improvements. Improvements? I've spent hundreds of thousands. It's the best equipped, most beautiful theatre in London. That makes them all the more determined to tear it down. I've arranged to see them again. I'll get you some compensation, at least. There's nothing else we can do. What's going to happen, Mrs Langtry? We're committed to touring your own play at the end of October. Yes, I know. It won't be worth bringing it into the Imperial for only a few weeks. You're right. I can't risk another loss. Book another theatre. There's none available. We'll have to cancel. No. 
No, we'll do the tour as arranged. Then we'll take the company straight to America. Is that wise, wise, Lily? In an untried play, partly written by you, the New York critics couldn't maul. Not always before you've had the prestige of a London success. And a royal first night to use as publicity. Your daughter and her husband came to our last garden party. They are very charming. Thank you, Mum. I say, Lily, looking at you, it's difficult to believe you're a grandmother. Do you spend much time with the little one? Not as much as I'd wish, Miss Knowles. It is lovely to see you again, Lily. I wanted to pay my respects before going off, Mum. Of course, you're heading back to America. Speak up, Bertie. I have always been able to hear Lily and Charlotte perfectly, but Lily you is are heading back to America. <laughs> He smokes far too much. I've always said so. <coughs> you see? And he rushes about almost as much as you do. Just won't stop work work. There's a lot to do, Alex. <coughs> you need not shout. <coughs> yes. Well, why are you going to America this time? I'm presenting a new play. It's called The Crossways, and I've written some of it myself. But how exciting. <laughs> I hope the public don't find it too daring, Ma. Is it not, Charlotte? <laughs> when are we to see it? I'm afraid I'm going straight from our northern tour to New York, Miss Knowles. You mean we're not to see it in London? Unfortunately. Oh, how disappointing, Lily. Why not? I don't have a theatre anymore. Ah, uh, yes. You lost quite a bit of money, I understand. What a pity we are not to see you in your new play, especially one that you have written yourself. <laughs> yes, Ma. Although there are a few days between the end of our tour and our sailing date, and I do own the Imperial until the end of the year. Put on a special performance, you mean, just for us? Would that be possible? I have never heard of anything so exciting. No, 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 Lily, it would involve you in far too much expense. Unless I gave a special performance in aid of one of Your Majesty's charities. Wonderful! We could arrange it together. Oh, yes, ma'am. I could send out invitations, and only those that had been invited would be allowed to buy tickets. And everyone who received an invitation would have to come. We will fill the theatre. Naturally, we will pay all your company's expenses, Lily. It will be an unforgettable night. Of course, it is up to you, Bertie. Hmm. Well, of course, I suppose we shall have to accept. After all, it will be a unique occasion, and it should impress the Americans as well. Well, that is settled then. Goodbye, dear Lily. Come along, Charlotte. You can speak to May on the telephone for me. She will help me to organize it. We will send out a list, and everybody who is in London at this point will be obliged to come and see it. Special command performance, eh? At whose command?